Before astronauts are set for an early return from the International Space Station after a medical concern for a Crew 11 member, it's the first medical evacuation in the space station's 25-year history. Joining me live now is ANU astrophysicist and cosmologist Dr Brad Tucker. Thank you for your time as always. Great to see you. Uh, what do we know about the situation? So, yeah, so th there's a few things. As you said, there's a crew of four. We don't know which one of the four. Um, and, and just to, to be clear on some of this, um, it could be any of the four astronauts on Crew 11. So even though NASA has made this decision, they're responsible for the entire crew. And so that represents two Americans, a Russian cosmonaut, and a Japanese astronaut. We do know the issue wasn't so serious that they had to evacuate immediately. Um, so that is always an option. That didn't happen. And so they, they've been up there since at least the the the, the issue has been public for, for over a week now. So immediate enough to get them down before they're set to return naturally, but not so immediate that they had to come down all right away. So it's kind of in between. Um, so clearly it is something that they can't diagnose. They can't solve in the space station, which there's a lot of things they can, and it needs medical intervention on Earth in order to solve the problem. Brad, is there any reason why they wouldn't be open or transparent about the exact situation here? I mean, when I was reading an article and it just said the crew member is stable, but kind of that vagueness leaves it open to interpretation. Is there any reason why they wouldn't be transparent about that? And I guess just to walk us through how dangerous this could potentially yeah. be, I understand it's not been done before. Yeah, so look, so there's, you know, I think one of the things is you have some privacy issues there. So I, so I, they, I think it will come out public, um, and that's usually because the data as an acting astronaut is usually made public. Now, once they leave the astronaut corps, that's not the case. Um, so eventually that will probably become public May as soon as, as soon as they would turn tomorrow evening. It also could hint that it's actually not NASA's decision. So if it is the Japanese or Russian uh, astronaut or cosmonaut respectively, it's actually to those groups who are deciding what to do. The NASA is just responsible for their safety and getting them back down. So that could be another reason as well. I also think there's the other issue. They want to get them down, make sure they're treated and, and clear before releasing it um, so they kind of know what they're dealing with. I think it implies that this is not just kind of a simple illness. It's also not something caused by space. It's clearly something that has arisen while they're up there, but probably you know more related to illnesses you would get here on Earth and may actually be 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 quite life changing or quite long term treatment. So I think there's a a lot of this they're trying to work through. Now, as you said, NASA hasn't done this before. The Russians actually did this in eighty five, but this hasn't really been done by NASA. It hasn't been done in this model. So while the, the normal return, it's fairly stock standard what they have to do, they already go through a lot in their human body. You know, when they come back down to Earth, all of this blood is leaving their brain because of the way gravity has, has changed their cardiovascular system. So they always come back and they look faint, they feel sick, they feel terrible when they return. You add that in to already having a medical condition, so there is some risk. And, you know, and if you're already not feeling well, and then you kind of have the equivalent of, uh, you know, extreme motion sickness, they are not going to be, you know, in, in that grade of shape when they come back down tomorrow evening our time. So, Brad, talk us through how they actually will return back to Earth. What will that look like? Yeah, so about 9 a.m. tomorrow our time, they will undock. So the beginning, so they start kind of this process about 7.30 our time, uh, a.m. our time, fairly stock standard in terms of getting in their suits, getting the capsule, doing the checks. Once they undock from the space station at about 9 a.m., they have a, a little over a 10 and a half hour return. Um, it's not kind of a direct shot. You have to eventually change your orbit. You have to slowly lower your orbit, and then you have to change your trajectory so that you're at the right entry point to re-enter where they want. So they're gonna be splashing down off the coast of California. But during the re-entry, that's always the tricky bit. Re-entry is always the most extreme part of space flight. Now, there's no reason to doubt that it shouldn't work flawlessly. It has with the SpaceX capsule before. They will then splash down, and then a crew will recover them and take them out. And they're kind of usually um, transferred out via almost a seat because they're too weak to essentially stand. So what we'll probably see is, depending on the severity of the medical issue, the medical team will meet all of the astronauts in particular, at least the one having the issue, get them out and then deal with whatever treatment they may need to do. It just may be as simple as going to hospital um, or something more, uh, more intravenous. 
we will see. Brad, you're a wealth of information. I always love getting you on to simplify this for us and explain it to us. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks.